Hey there. This new format has me thrown, uh, thrown off. I don't know how this all works because I'm not doing it from my phone. I'm doing it from the desktop. But if anybody's listening to me, just give me a like, whatever, so I know you're there. So oh, now it says I'm live. All right. Well, I, I was just reading and talking. I've been talking to some friends and and uh, something I've just been chewing on. I just I just thought I needed to share. Um, <clears throat> and as many of you who know me will will be not be surprised at it's out of Luke chapter ten. I'm I've been doing a lot of study and a lot of camping out there. So um, anyway, if you can hear me, just give me a like, whatever else. I do that. I don't know. Maybe you don't even do that anymore. I don't know how this whole thing works anymore. But um. But, you know, I know we've all had a lot of time to think since we've been staying at home through this whole coronavirus thing. And um, I was just listening to a friend of mine who was talking about transitions. And, um, you know, if I, th I think if we come out of this time of reflection and, and meditation and staying at home without seeing some changes or transitions that, God may want to do, then we've, we've lost one of the biggest opportunities we've been given through this crisis. And I'm the, I don't want to belittle the pain that people are going through and all the stuff that they're, uh, the struggle, you know, the loss that people are experiencing. I don't want to belittle that at all. But I also recognize it gives us a time to reflect on what are we doing? Why are we doing it? And, you know, is this what we should be doing? Right? And it just goes back to something, uh, and from a Christian perspective, I've, I've, I've was been laid on my heart strongly for the last, well, actually several years now, and it just isn't going away, is the whole concept of the harvest. And for those of you that are not Christians, that's fine. I think you'll still find this intriguing because it really, I think, is true in every area of the walk of life, but this message is for those that are in the church today. But um, what I wanted to talk about was the harvest. You know, it says in Luke chapter 10, um, you know, I'm not going to talk about, he appointed 70 others in pairs, but it says in um, verse 2, and he was saying to them, the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore, beseech the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. So what I wanted to talk about was this, this whole thing, but to talk about it logistically. He said, the harvest is plentiful. It's white. It's ready for harvest. We don't have to wonder, when does God want to do this? They were ready. Hey, Jack, I'm good thinking about some interesting things. But um, I, um, I'm, I'm thinking about this thing, because he says the harvest is ready, it's, it's plentiful. You know, there's all kinds of people waiting to hear the message. There's all kinds of people waiting for what we can bring them. But the laborers are few. Well, we normally heard, hear that taught in a sense of um, the laborers are few, so there's got to be a lot more people that go to seminary and get trained up as missionaries so we can send them out as missionaries. I, I really want us to think beyond our wineskin or our, our framework that we're used to because it just doesn't work. And that's not to say anything negative about missionaries or people that went into ministry. I've been in full-time ministry for 25 years. I'm not against that, okay? But let's think outside the box a little bit here. So I was actually on the phone earlier today with a really good friend of mine who uh, has done consulting and worked with Christian leaders for years. And, and we were discussing this thing because it's been coming up in my conversation with something that happened with him where there were several leaders on the West Coast, Christian leaders that met with that had been praying for a billion person harvest, one billion with a B. And I'm all for it. That would be exciting. And everybody's praying for it. And let's, let's 
let's let's really go after this and, and really dig in and deep and pray about it. But he approached it logistically. He goes, okay, guys, a one billion person harvest would be awesome. But let's think this through. Because when you look in the pattern of scripture, God never brings forth something that he doesn't prepare the soil for. He doesn't prepare, and he's saying it right here. He goes, the harvest is ready, it's plentiful, but the laborers are few. So he's wanting more laborers for what the task that's about to happen. And he's saying, that is a really important thing. So pray to the Lord of the harvest that he would bring more laborers. So pray for laborers. Okay, so let's talk about this logistically. He went to these Christian leaders and said, okay, you guys want a billion person harvest? And they go, yeah, we want a billion person harvest. We think that would be the Lord's heart. I totally agree. But whether it's paid or unpaid, but somebody that's you know, well grounded in the scriptures, how many Christian workers, uh, I think you know, them being paid would be a, a good thing. I'm not against that. How many Christian workers would you need per, you know, how many, well, really the question is how many new Christians can be uh, mentored or, or uh, cultivated or shepherded, or whatever word you want to use, um, for every one Christian worker, somebody who can kind of get them grounded in the scriptures and the truth of, of the gospel and all that stuff. And they, they start thinking about that and said, well, boy, we really want less than this, but maybe one out of 20. So one Christian worker for every 20 new believers. He goes, well, let's see the grace of, God, grace of God is profound and we can do one Christian worker for every hundred new Christians that come to Christ. Okay, so follow me on this. They're saying we need one, we need one Christian worker for every 20 people. Actually, I think it's a lot. I mean, Jesus can only do 12. What makes us think we do more? But let's say the grace of God abounds and we're able to do a hundred new believers for every one Christian worker. One out of a hundred. If we did that to, to get a billion person harvest, we would need 10 million, million, 10 million additional new Christian workers beyond the people that are already doing ministry today. 10 million that can take them through the whole process, get them grounded in the fundamentals of faith and doctrine and, and to equip them and train them and, and, and get them to function and, and, and be pastored in a healthy manner. 10 million new workers on top of all the people that are ministering today. I don't think... It, it's hard for you to believe that that's something that's frankly impossible to do with the traditional models we have in place today to raise up people in maturity and faith in our churches as far as leaders and leadership goes. 10 million in order to handle a harvest that size, and that's one out of 100. So actually, if we're wanting it to be one Christian worker for 10 people, then we've got to do this tenfold. Right, so that'd be a hundred million new Christian workers. The model that we do to raise up leaders in the church today just doesn't won't work to see that happen. So, just looking at what Jesus says right here in Luke ten, how we raise up leaders isn't how He raised up leaders, and so we need to look at a different model. And I'm not going to go into what that model is today. But I think we've got to do one of we need to simplify what the expectations are for helping somebody get grounded in the word. And then we've got to create a way to duplicate it. But other than that, all I want you to think about today is he says here in Luke 10, the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few, which we just recognized in the model that we're doing today isn't going to create enough laborers to affect and be prepared for this harvest that he wants to bring. And my point is, he's not going to give us a billion souls if we don't have a fishnet to catch them. 
And you may disagree with me on that, but that's a pattern I see as he's preparing. He's asking now for the fishnet. So go and beseech the Lord of the harvest for that fishnet. Ask the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into this harvest because he doesn't want anything to get lost. I can tell you time and time again of different movements that have happened in the past where you know, thousands of people were coming to Christ in a matter of four to six weeks. And literally, in some cases, the church couldn't handle it. They raised up 100 leaders. 100 leaders couldn't handle the increase. So they even asked other churches in town to take some of these new converts. And they, and literally, sometimes, I'm not saying this every time, but in some cases, these other leaders say, our programs and our classes are full. We can't handle any of your new people. It blows my mind to hear that. We need to create a model. We need to create a fishnet where that's not even a, a mindset that can enter in because it's designed for the increase. So I just say to think about it. It is incredible, Catherine. It is absolutely incredible of what God, I believe, wants to do. And as we're thinking about all the transitions that need to happen, as we think about all the things that I believe God wants to do out of all this pain. You know, we can't have a mindset of, well, this is the way we've always done it. Well, you know, actually, we can flip on, uh, that on its ear because we haven't been doing Luke 10 or Matthew 10. So let's go back to that. Let's go back to the model of what Jesus taught us in Matthew 10 and Luke 10 because it's designed for this. That's why he's saying, pray the, pray the Lord of Harvest that he'd send out laborers. What we're doing today, what I'm about to show you, that I'm about to lay out for you today, pray that we can have more people. Pray that I can raise up more people to do what we're going to be doing today, and that's when he sent out the 70. And we can talk about that another day. But what I wanted to lay down here was this whole thing about the harvest. The harvest is ready. You don't have to wonder if, if, the, if the Lord wants to bring the harvest today. He's, he's ready. It's, it's been plentiful. He's been ready to bring it at any, any moment. Pray to him, to the Lord of the harvest, to send out laborers, to give us the strategy, to give us the understanding, to give us his wisdom on what he's doing to raise up those laborers in this hour. And I guarantee you, it is not church as usual. It's not what we've known. It's something that's not new. There's nothing new under the sun, right? That's what the scripture says. It's not new but it's his and it's timing i believe is now so uh message me dialogue with me i love talking about this stuff i'll go further into this later but i just want to hang out on this whole thing of do we have enough people equipped to handle all the people god wants to love on and reach right now into the kingdom of god it's going to take a model we're not doing it in a, in a macro sense. Oh, there's pockets here. I, just to talk to a, a guy I work with whose wife has set up a mission thing out in Asia where they're doing this. They're doing what I'm talking about. So that's not new. It just needs to be a whole lot more people doing it. So think about that. If we want to see a harvest come, we've got to have a ton of laborers you know, one out of 100 Christian workers would be 10 million more people. But it's more like a quarter of a million more people that can impact people to that effect, if not more. So before I go into detail on how that all works, just chew on that fact. Is if we're wanting a massive harvest, it's not going to work with just waiting for our pastor or this minister down the street and this missionary to do what they're good at doing it's going to be a completely different critter than what we are used to doing so without creating any conclusions go to the lord of the harvest right now and pray that's what i'm doing for laborers talk soon